everything. I was a fighter, I was a trainer, um, and I was fairly young then. Um, we did, even after that, uh, with Doug LaFonsi, Steve Shively, we were still doing kickboxing stuff. Um, probably, I'm, I'm thinking, eight years ago was the last time I did a show. Um, and we, we did, had, were successful at doing shows here for quite a while with them. But uh, you know now it's everybody wants to be a cage fighter. There's really no kickboxing anymore. However, there seems to be a little bit of interest in it now. Uh, there was some cage fights in December. Uh, they put a kickboxing match on to start those fights. There's some more cage, or I'm sorry, there's some more kickboxing fights coming up uh, January 11th as part of a pro boxing show. So they're going to put some on that. Um, the kickboxing to start the cage fights off is kind of funny because when I was doing shows, when I was doing kickboxing, we were putting MMA fights on to start the kickboxing. We never really had a team per se, um, at least not, not I, w I just guess I wouldn't term it that. Um, if we did it now, I would probably term it that because there would be a little more of that uh, mentality with it than what we had back then. But uh, we were easily running 20, 30 fighters out of here. Um, several uh, fighters that we were, were working with and managing when I worked for Brian Lee uh, were rated. Um, we did not have any that became world champions. I did have uh, Steve Shively and Doug LaFonsi after we were kicks when we were pro karate. Um, become world champions of the kick organization. Uh, the PKA had already disappeared by that point in time. So um, kick, kick took over, or kick replaced PKA? Well, kick was around when the PKA was around, but the PKA was by far the dominant organi organization. The PKA had television, mm -hmm. and it, you know that makes all the difference in the world, all the difference in the world. Uh, Kick may have had one or two events that actually got televised. The PKA had a show on every week. 